And then when you move into the New Testament, you find that in John chapter 14, verse 6, John 14, verse 6, Jesus will not just show you a way, he will tell you, I am the way. But when you read John 11, from verse 39 to 44, John 11, 39 to 44, you will discover that in the case of the Lord Jesus Christ, he produced a way when everybody thought there was absolutely no way. At a time when Lazarus was not just dead, but buried, rotting, stinking, the rod of Jesse stood by the tomb and called Lazarus to come forth. Remember when he said, Lazarus, come forth, several things were to happen at that moment. Lazarus was already dead. His flesh was already rotting. Worms were already consuming the rotten flesh. The blood had changed to blackish water. So when the rod of Jesse spoke, number one, everything that the worms had consumed, they vomited. So everything the devil has taken from you, you are going to get back. The blood that had changed to black water became blood again. So tonight God is going to reverse the irreversible for you. And not only did Lazarus got up, the very sickness that killed him was also completely dismissed. I am standing on the authority of the Word of God to tell you the healings that you get tonight will be permanent. And then somebody said that if Jesus Christ had not mentioned Lazarus, if instead of saying Lazarus come forth, if he had stood before the tomb and said, Come forth. Everyone that had died before man was born would have come out of the tomb. But it was specific. He mentioned Lazarus. So tonight God is going to be specific. He's going to mention the name of somebody. He's going to say, Adeboye, come forth. If you are the one he's going to mention, shout hallelujah. I've shared this story with you before. 1981. I was visiting my town for the first time as general overseer. The town came out to receive me. And then when the Oba was going to make a speech, he made a request. My town is somewhere in between Ife and Elisha. From Elisha to Ifewara was a distance of 13 miles, they call it then, but that's about 20 kilometers. The distance between my town and Ife was eight kilometers. But there was no road between 
Ife and Ifewara. So if you want to go to Ife from Ifewara, you have to go to Elisha, 20 kilometers, and then travel about another 32 kilometers to get to Ife. And my people say, you see, we, we, we do this Israelite journey. We wish that there be a road connecting us to Ife. Well, I did the only thing I could do. I said, show me the direction you want the road. And they showed me the direction. And I lifted my right hand, pointed in that direction, and cried unto my God, Father, let there be a way. Six months later, and I'm talking of 1981, at a time when nobody knew me at all, somebody woke up in Abuja and said, ah, there's a road here. It's a federal road, though it is small. To cut a long story short, I raised my hand in the direction that I said that the people said they wanted the road, and within six months, work began. Tonight, I'm raising my hand to all of you who are here and all of you who are connecting to us throughout the world. From today onward, there will be a way for you. You may want to write your prayer number two. Prayer number two. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, every obstruction on my way, clear by fire. Every obstruction on my way, clear by fire. It's all thing that the rod of fire can do is that you can close the door against your pursuers. One of my children mentioned it in passing. He said that the rod that opened the Red Sea for the children of Israel is also the same rod that closed it against the Egyptians. Exodus 14, from verse 23 to 28. Exodus 14. Thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell someone, he says, the recurrent crisis in your family is over now. Exodus 14, from verse 23 to 28. After the children of Israel had passed through the Red Sea on dry ground, and Pharaoh and his host followed them, the Lord told Moses, turn in the other direction, raise your hand again, and the sea closed on the enemies. In 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 1 to 7, 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 1 to 7, when the creditors came to the widow of one of the prophets, and they said, if we don't pay the amount you are owing us by tomorrow, we will sell your children. She cried to the man who had the mantle, Elisha. And you remember the story very well. 
In the morning, tremendous embarrassment was coming into the life of this widow. By the evening, the door had been shut against the embarrassment. In the name that's above every other name, anything that is causing you embarrassment, the fire of God will shut the door against it. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, when you move into the New Testament, from verse 1 to 8, Acts 3, 1 to 8, when Peter and John were going to the temple to pray, they saw this man who was born lame by the beautiful temple begging for arms. And when he asked for arms, and Peter said to him, Look on us. Silver and gold are fine now, but I have something. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. The lame man must have been seriously embarrassed. How? Sir, what, was, what kind of joke is this? If you have no money to give me, go. You see me here, lame from my mother's womb, and you say, get up and walk. If I can walk, will I be here? But then, Peter grabbed his hand. And like I told some of my children not too long ago, the head is the citadel for anointing. When in Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4, Acts 2, 1 to 4, when the Holy Spirit came, he came as cloven tongues of fire, like one of my sons said, and sat on the head of those who were there. The fire landed on the head of Peter. But while the head is the citadel of the anointing, the hand is the conductor that will cause the anointing to flow from the source to where it is needed. When Peter grabbed that man by hand, the Bible says, his ankle bone received strength. Anointing flowed into that man. And the man who was feeling embarrassed before suddenly got up, found that ah, I can stand. He tried to see you. Can I really walk? I can walk. Can I jump? He found that he could jump. I can't reach all of you one by one. But I believe the Almighty God is asking me to stretch my hand to you one more time. And to all of you, particularly those of you who are here tonight, those of you in the overflow in the old arena, and those of you who are watching all over the world, as I stretch my hand to you, every form of embarrassment in your life will disappear. That lame man never begged again. And in the name that's above every other name, you will never beg again. My precious saints, God bless you so much. Once again, we thank you for staying tuned with us. You're welcome to RCCG NCP TV YouTube channel. And we trust the Lord 
as we have been committed to seeing that your life is transformed. Your transformation, your story, positive impact is our concern, is our priority, and your soul matters so much to us to see that at the end of this journey here upon the earth, that you make heaven at last. We love you so much and we are grateful to God that you still keep watching our channel and also listening to the word of the Lord by his servant, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. This is our commitment to ensuring that we bring clips to you that will stir you up, that will charge up your faith, help you to build up your most holy faith, even while you engage them in the place of prayer, ensuring that your faith in God is not cast down, is not downtrodden. Your faith in God is stirred up, even as you move with Him, you build a close fellowship, a close relationship with Him through His Word. We trust the Lord that through these clips of videos or messages that your life will not remain the same. We also trust the Lord that even through these clips that every backslider will come back to the faith, sinners will be repented and also everyone who has lost touch with God will be realigned again back to the will of the Father. The will of the Father is to see that you remain His own, you become faithful to Him, you serve Him, you love Him with all your heart, you give Him your very best, even as He prepares your life, blesses you, helps you, hold you by the hand. It's because you cannot run alone, you cannot walk alone. God is always there to help you, He's always there to hold you by the hand. The Lord remains your shepherd, and so surely you shall not want. Stay put and also see to it that bit by bit your life remains unchanged from the will of God. God have you in his mind. He have you in his purpose. Do well to stay with us and also ensure you hit the subscribe button. Share this video to your loved ones, family and friends and to everyone you trust the Lord to see a change in their life. We are committed to ensuring that these clips cause positive transformation in your life. Thank you so, so much. We love you so much and God bless you.